What's going on guys? My name is Joe Torres and welcome to my channel. Uh, today we're going to talk about, as a wedding photographer, why and when does gear matter? Um, I think it's a forever argument and there's always going to be, oh gear doesn't matter and gear does matter and today we're going to actually talk about why it does and I'm actually going to create a feature uh, video to this which talks about when and why gear doesn't matter. But for today, I believe as a professional wedding photographer, your gear does matter and maybe not in the way you think. All right, so let's get the first one out of the way and I feel like it's very straightforward, right? And I think a lot of you would agree with me that as a professional, as someone who's getting paid to capture someone's wedding, um, you know, you kind of get one chance. So you want to make sure that your gear works, <laughs> all right? You want to make sure that you have the necessary lenses, proper camera, proper lighting, uh, ND filters, anything that's actually gonna help you make creating easier, essentially, right? Because at the end of the day, they're entrusting you to make sure that you show up and you have all the things that are necessary. So making, you know, you obviously wanna make sure that you have SD cards, batteries, all that fun stuff. Um, but Joe, there's people who shoot on their phone. Yes, there is actually, there, there very much is. There's people who, I actually know someone, her name is Savannah and she owns a company called A Girl and Her Phone Vids. Um, and she's actually a wedding videographer out in Missouri. And she does amazing work. Yes, she shoots with an iPhone, but she's not shooting the entire wedding handheld, right? She's making sure that her audio is good. She makes sure that she has lights. She's making sure that she has a gimbal for her phone and that she's able to charge it, I'm sure. So like she has everything that she needs in order to get the job done. All right, let's move on to number two. Number two is access. So what do I mean by access? Well, as a storyteller, as a wedding photographer or videographer in this case, um, you want access to the couple. You want to be able to capture their day um, in, in really capturing who they are getting to know the couple and making people feel comfortable. So I think your gear matters here in terms of how does it allow you to get access, right? So the smaller footprint that you can have, the better. And here's an example, right? Like let, let, let's take the example. How many of us have in the past been the fly in the back of the room, right? You've got the 85 on, you've got the 7200 and you're shooting the whole wedding from basically from your perspective of being in the back of the room but you can zoom in and you can get those tighter shots. And that's great. Or what if you put on a 35 millimeter and a 23 or maybe a 16, right? What if you went wide? You would need to get real close to your subject, right? And I'm not talking about being in an obnoxious way, but my example, it would be, I shoot on Fuji. So the cameras are small. I'm usually shooting with an X-H1 and an X100V. The X100V, this little guy, is on me majority of the day, especially during prep um, and even during uh, the reception, actually. One, it's a conversation piece for a lot of people. Like a lot of people just get amazed when I have it on me, um, which is really funny. They're like, oh, is that a film camera? Or it looks like a film camera. And because it looks no big, it's not that much bigger than your phone. So people kind of aren't so freaked out when you're pointing it at them, right? They, they're, they're more open and I've gotten people to actually um, smile and pose because they're like, oh, he's taking a photo. Um, but they're not intimidated. They're not, they're not like, oh my God, there's this huge giant camera pointed at my face or this huge giant thing. And, and, and listen, it's not to say that, you know, shooting Canon or, or Sony or Nikon or whatever is bad, it's not. Um, I definitely think that you can still have a very minimalist um, approach to it if you choose different gear. Like maybe maybe you have your camera on your side, right? Like so I show up with my whole fast money maker and my cameras are down at my side and the first thing I do when I walk into the room is I greet everyone. I say what's up, I give hugs, you know, handshakes, whatever. Um, and they don't even notice that my camera is at my side. And I kind of just sit around and, and observe what's going on first. And that gives me access to my couples because they're already freaking out, right? Imagine if I walked in and like the bride is freaking out because they're running late, hair and makeup's not fully done yet. 
and I show in and I'm like, okay, big camera, let's go. Versus, okay, maybe my camera's on my side or maybe not on me at all. And I walk in and I just kind of ask like, hey, is there anything I can do? Um, do you need anything? And immediately they're gonna just come right back down to earth. And they'll be like, oh wow, no, actually. Um, or yeah, I can use this. Or you just go grab something for them, right? Or, you say, or, or maybe you just have a quick prep talk and you're just like, okay, listen, like everything's gonna be fine. This is your day and it's gonna be amazing. So it's just something to think about, you know, maybe put the 70 to 200 away and show up with a 23 or 35 and see how close can you get to your couples without being obnoxious and focus more on having relationships with your couples and the people that are at the wedding. What, what would that wedding look like? Let's move on to number three. This one is more so not even really gear, but it's actually how can you become a better photographer and that is through community. So it's more so we can call it resource. Guys, I've become a better photographer by joining several photography groups, but I'm gonna tell you about one which changed, which made me elevate at a time when I was stuck. And that is the Photographic Collective. Like it's not like some of these other photo and video communities where you know you ask for a critique or you ask for help and people rip you in half no it's actually a place where people love people more than they do photos um and it's probably the best little corner of the internet i've ever been a part of um it's not my i can't say that i own it i don't but i am i do play a big role in there and i am a moderator so if you would like to come and join us come check out what we have to offer i mean guys we talk about everything in there yeah we talk about photos from time to time but really it's about building each other up and making each other better as not only photographers but also human beings and i think the better of a human being you are the better you can serve yourself uh your clients your family so i will leave that in the description and i hope to see you guys in there all right guys this has been great and i will catch you next time later all right, guys, one last thing. Um, if you enjoyed this video and this resonated with you, please go ahead and hit that like button. Uh, and also, if you could, just comment down below. Let's have a conversation, whether you agree or disagree with some of the things, um, some things I can improve, uh, anything at all, honestly. Um, down to have a conversation. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. All right, later. This was helpful for... What am I saying? <laughs>